Hi everyone, welcome to devlog number 24. It's been a long time since I've posted a development log and that's because uh, I've been working and you can't simply keep posting videos and posting content if you're working on something. So that's why there's a delay. Um, I see a lot of people on YouTube that just keep pumping stuff out and it seems to be the same thing or it's sort of like a you know, borrowed content that keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed and I have to make the, I'm making things first and then I will obviously share it with you. So thank you to all my patrons for providing the justification for the project. Um, without you, this would not be happening and it's really important to nowadays, especially now, for an open source game to exist. <sighs> so thank you to all the patrons. Names up in lights. Now I would like to show the progress for the game. Um, and typically I sm show a smaller piece of the game, but now actually I have a very large piece of the game to share. And I'm actually going to switch my screen here to the menu. So here we have the, uh, you probably can't see that. That's just my full screen. Let me do transition. There we go, transition. There you go, now there's the whole menu. So the game menu uh, exists and uh, while this looks very bare bones right now, this is the this is the template that I can now design over. So designing obviously is a much easier process for me than the, the coding portion of this. And I could very rapidly create once everything's coded in here. Cheers, by the way, I'm drinking coffee today. So here you can see the, the Grim Reaper dealing the cards. And uh, I've noticed a lot of things on Twitter. Uh, people will show neat animations or neat coding little tricks. Having everything come all together like this takes a lot of work. It's not just uh, a simple demo scene. This is taking place in an open world, and a lot of this takes... It takes more than just animation, texture, modeling. It takes planning. So this scene has been planned from the start, and if you don't have that plan in place, when you start to build your scene, you won't know what you're going to do, and therefore you won't know what to plan for, and therefore things won't come together. And this is the culmination, so far, of those things coming together. This is, yes, the open world, and the player is now walking around in that open world. And even now, there's quite a few bugs still affecting the game, quite a few. Uh, you can see that I can walk through the world, um, and there's a day-night cycle that's currently at play. There'll be a slow, steady sunset. Most recently is this light tracking for the flashlight and object interaction. So you can now open and close doors, and you can interact, obviously, with Windows. We've seen that before. I've also now included the object mounting system. So you can jump inside of objects, wherever they may be, and you can hide. So I've decided to jump sideways into this little trunk here. That's a little fun. And then it sets the camera back and sets the player back in the world origin. So this is this is a little bit more difficult than one might think, but it takes a lot of finesse and a lot of code to make it run properly, just to get this mouse look function working. So now we're going to jump out here, and I'm going to show one of the greatest successes thus far and that is the vehicle physics and the mounting and controlling of the vehicle. So you can see the car here doesn't have very good shocks at the moment and it, the physics are actually making it drift a little bit on the ground. So that would require me to put some code in there that says if this speed is at a certain level just pause the car because right now you can see it's repeatedly ramming this stump over here and that's okay that's kind of fun. So we're going to jump in the car and there we go. Unfortunately the headlights have not been activated yet but that's something that's on the, the road, road map here. Let me jump out of the car for just a moment. Another bug that currently exists is once I've exited the vehicle, you can see that the, uh, the flashlight no longer works until I fire the shotgun. Then I can go back and I can turn the flashlight on. So that's a bug that I have to fix. Oh, also the parallax ground material now mixes seamlessly with the grass you can see here. So you'll, you'll be able to actually sculpt the terrain and uh, customize the game if you want to, but it's more likely that you probably want to play the game than anything else. So I'm, so I'm waiting here for 
the full darkness to come and the sunset and I'm going to jump back in the car here because then the day the daylight will come back and I'll be able to see where I'm driving so let's see if I can do that here we are so the, the player can now mount inside the vehicle the vehicle can drive so this is the last bug that I'm currently working on I'm going to be generous in calling it a bug but you can see the sky is currently tracking with the car and that's because the car um, is is has its own uh, player physics it has its own physics that are technically corrupting the orientation matrix of the um, the player camera. So the player camera will essentially um, track to, with, with the car and then the car needs to now, the orientation matrix essentially needs to be multiplied by the, uh, the global settings of the world and the camera so that this offset doesn't occur. So an example of that is I can move the camera around and the sky appears to be updating correctly with the camera. However, it's not. And you can see that the car is the, the sky is tracking with the car. So that's my most current bug. But once that bug is complete, I will have an open world where you can drive the car around and um, run around this open world and really explore. You, um, you can also hear, possibly, I'll be quiet for a moment. That's the sound. So different materials that you run on will have different sound effects. And it's uh, using a ray sensor to detect that. Let me see if I can find the... Uh, so if I run over these rocks... Not these ones, but some of them will. You'll get like a nice rock sound. So possibly over these ones here. Well, those ones aren't working, but right now you can hear the grass sound effect. And here you can see the uh, the ground appears to mix in a very visually pleasing way, and that's using a very limited amount of geometry, working within the confines of the Up Blender game engine. Thankfully, it has an amazing parallax system that's scalable, so as you walk towards things, that actually scales into place and things become visible, which is which is wonderful. Let me see if I can jump over in this vehicle here. Uh, let me see if I can go over here. Also, and the object fighting system with the open world is very difficult because you need to compensate for a lot of quaternion math here. There we are. You can see I can hide in this object here. I'll jump right back out again. And that's pretty fantastic. Anyway, um, I guess this has been sort of my update. I was also going to share a little bit more about some of the back-end stuff, but I'll save that for another update. I want to thank all patrons for their current support, and um, uh, as soon as I solve this look bug here, which is causing the camera to have a delay, you can also see there's a slight frame to, oh, I just fell out of the ground here, and also I can jump out of the car here, and since we're going very quickly, the car is now falling, and uh, yes. My, the fun part about this is I can probably catch up to the car if I'm falling. Oh, it's, up, it's above me up there. There it is. So you can actually jump into the car if you fall through the level and uh, jump inside the car as it's falling. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Oh, I missed it. Oh, wait, I can just fly up again. Oh, well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll pause the video here, or end the video here. What's that?